Welcome to the Average Nobody's Podcast, the ultimate home for wrestling enthusiasts, beer drinkers, movie quoters, and pop culture connoisseurs. Here are your hosts, Matt and Ryan. Welcome back to the Average Nobody's Podcast number 67 for March 22nd, 2018. On today's show, we're chatting about what we've been up to, Barstool and the WWE joining forces, Rough and Rowdy 3, the latest from Donald Trump, the Twitter question of the week, and what we're watching. You can chat with us on Twitter at Average Nobodies, toss us a like on Facebook at Average Nobodies, and heart all of our pictures on Instagram also at Average Nobodies. Don't forget, this podcast is available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube. My name is Ryan, and my partner in crime is Matt. I'm here. Hey, hey, we're back. We're back. It feels good. It feels good. When I did, I did the movie podcast earlier this week with Adam, and we had been equally as gone for as long as we've been gone, uh, not not doing the podcast because of the hectic last month we've had. Um, yeah. So it, it was good to be back. So I, and I was particularly excited for this one because while we're a little bit, well, I'm a little behind on TV Club. I have a lot to talk about otherwise, just just normally. So so there's there's not going to be a shortage of, of fun stuff on tonight's podcast. I got a feeling. I agree, and it's nice that it's it's almost like an exact month. I was going through the the docs, and uh, our last podcast was February twenty third. Wow. So yeah, so missed about a month, but obviously we haven't just been sitting on our butts doing nothing. No. Um. So Matt, what have you been up to? Well. Both of us, we both bought houses. We both bought new yes. houses with our significant others. Yep. Uh, Self high five. What? Self high five. Yes. Yes. High five. Um, it's been, and we we pretty much closed within a week of each other, right? It was or within a couple of days. A couple of days. Yeah, I closed <laughs> on the twelfth, March twelfth. Yeah. So yeah, and we were the fifteenth. So we just got in there, and we've been doing work, and it's like. It's, I mean, the house is great and it's in great shape and there's not like a ton that needs to be done. Like we want to eventually do the kitchen and like a few other renovations, like big renovations, but like for us to move in, like we're just doing painting and we're getting the floors redone and, but the fucking walls, every wall in the house has wallpaper. So (laughs) for the past, since we closed, I've been spending probably four hours a day at least there after work or on the weekends, like just removing wallpaper and it's been a waking nightmare like i go to bed with wallpaper glue all over me and i wake up and i have to like try and scrub it off because i'm too tired to take a shower at night i just want to go to bed and i'm just been it's just been a fucking nightmare um but we're down to the final room but there's a twist this final hey. room has oh, wall- wallpaper on top of wallpaper there's a couple spots where there's oh. where there's old wallpaper, and then they put new wallpaper on top of it. It's just a fun and happy. Like, of course, it had to be the last room, right? It couldn't have been. Yeah. It could have been the first room, right? Where I was like ready to like go. Eager. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was the last room where I'm like I'm ready to like just lay on the ground and just die. Um, so uh, that's been going on. I've also been traveling a little bit for work. I was in Orlando, and then I was in Dallas. And I'm not sure if we talked about me being in Orlando, but there wasn't a, a big gap in between there. I'm trying to remember when I got back. But anyway, I went to Dallas, and then I went to Houston. I was in Texas for about two weeks total. Um, Dallas is an interesting place. There's not yeah. there's not a ton going on. There's delicious barbecue. It's it's Texas, so you get all the delicious barbecue and everything. But I think that Dallas needs like a few like you know entertainment slash like attractions for people to do in Texas because I think they're starting to go crazy. Uh, in Dallas, because I asked five people, five different people on different occasions, and they weren't together. What are some things I should do in Dallas? And uh, four out of five of the people, the first thing they said was go see where JFK was shot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK. And then that that other person, the, the five out of five person told me second. They said first get barbecued, then go see where JFK got shot. And then the other people said go see where JFK got shot and can go eat barbecue. So the first two things to do in Dallas that uh, five people told me was either go watch where go see where a president was assassinated and then have some barbecue. Not And I understand <laughs> it. I understand like it's a you know, it's a very 
historical spot in you know american culture and everything but yeah. like for that to be the go-to yeah in yeah. like this enormous city this enormous popular city yeah i feel like they need to yeah i agree i mean they need to kind of figure out a different yeah they number need, one they need to sit down with other people from dallas and be like listen we can't be telling people from out of town that the first thing they people need to be doing is go see where jfk got his brains blown out all over the street like that that can't be the first thing we tell people. We have to. We they have to all get on the same page. Uh, right. The other thing about Dallas that's interesting is all the like a lot of the skyscrapers all have like these really bright neon lights on them, and which is so it's so odd. It's so odd. It's like one one building did it, and then all the other buildings, the owners of the other buildings are like, you know what? We're not going to be left out here. We're going to throw on neon lights, too. And just, like, it's it's shocking how many of the downtown lights have, like... And not just, like... You know how, like, the... Well, I don't know what skyscraper it is in Providence, but it has the lights around the top, like, the colored yeah. lights. It's not like that. It's, like, spanning, like, from the ground up, like, up up and down. Like, neon lights, up and down. Like, all different colors, but blues, reds, greens, up and down. And then the, the big, like, hotel that's downtown is the Omni, and it flashes, it just glows. It's like it's like these buildings were taken from Vegas and just slapped in the middle of Dallas. It like doesn't fit. It's interesting to have a skyscraper that's already kind of standing above and beyond things, and then yeah. throwing some neon lights on there. Yeah, it's very unnecessary. Got- yeah. Um, and then my last little tidbit from Dallas, um, well, Dallas centric is I went to go check into the hotel. And mm-hmm. the guy looked up my information and was like, "Oh, Matt Vieira, okay. Oh, eleven nights." And then he's like, he like looks down, and he starts typing on his computer. And he goes, "You know, not many people stay here for that long." <laughs> and, and I like tried to I tried to clarify. I'm like, "At this hotel or in Dallas?" And he's like, "Oh no, in Dallas." He goes, <laughs> he, goes he goes, "The only people that stay here that long are the people that live here." <laughs> wow. So. so again, it doesn't seem like the people who live in Dallas are the biggest proponents of the city. Yeah, yeah. And then the and then the best part, the the, the whole like the coup de grace of the whole story is my the hotel room that I spent eleven nights in, when I opened up the window, guess what I was looking at? What? I was looking at where JFK was shot. Oh my god. <laughs> it, was, it was directly across the street, right in front of my hotel. I couldn't escape it. I couldn't escape it if I wanted to. So I saw it. I saw it. I feel like maybe this is like the universe giving you a sign that you should <laughs> you need to open up the investigation again. I, I think I think I think I need to grab that cold case and uh Yeah. yeah. That's wild. I need to exonerate uh Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> it was someone <laughs> Dig else. him up. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> oh, this is this is illegal. <laughs> so other than that, I mean there was a few other things like uh uh, we were, I was working one of the shows, and I went to the bathroom like early in the morning in the convention center where like nobody was there yet. It was just the workers, and one of the guys that like works at the convention center was like I could hear like heavy breathing as I turned the corner in the bathroom, and the guy that's like cleaning the bathroom, the janitor, is just like, like, like he's swinging his arms wildly up and down, like doing like calisthenics in the bathroom, and he like saw me, and he didn't really like like get like uh, like you know, like startled that I was coming in. He just kept doing it. And then he stopped and he's like, you know, got to keep that heart moving. Got to keep that heart moving. And I was like, all right, man, like you do you. So I went to the urinal. I started taking a piss and he continued. He just continued swinging his arms, doing like uh, doing exercises in front of the mirror. Huh. You think like when he saw you, he'd stop. Nope. No, he just kept doing it. He was like, he's like, I'm not going to be deterred by this guy coming in here to use the bathroom. I'm, I got to, I got to get my reps in. Hey, good for him, I guess. It sounds like a very strange man, though. Yeah, I also got shamed by TSA. Uh, <laughs> TSA, I, you know the thing where you put your hands up and they scan you, like the the you walk into yeah. the machine, right? Well, I did that, and he like the guy's like, and then he, I go over and he's like scanning me with the the magnetic wand, and then he's like, pull your pants up, and I like went to go pull my pants up, and he's like, you're good to go, and I was like, oh, he just so he just told me to pull my pants up. Just because, because he thought I should be pulling my pants up, not because it had anything to do with the thing. Because like I pulled my pants up and I waited for him to like do whatever he needed to do, and he just kind of like was like, "Oh, you can go now." I was like, "All right." So he just like shamed me into pulling my pants up. So now I make sure like I wear my belt extra tight because apparently I've been wearing my pants too low. I don't know. It's an odd thing. Ryan, you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, the um, okay. the speaker got turned off. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. 
Um, I was talking, you, and I'm like, "Why is he not here?" <laughs> did you did you hear did you hear about what, what, what the the so the, the TSA agent shamed me? It's pulling my pants. Yeah, no, okay. my my microphone like I I oh. must have t- oh, okay. when I like keep my screen going. I like sometimes I touch the um, microphone button, it turns it off. So uh, okay, I was what I was saying is like you don't you know I feel like I've known you for a long time pretty well, yeah. and I, I don't really classify you as someone who. Like wears really baggy pants. Yeah, or someone that like busts a sag in my pants. Like I don't. That's 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 not something I I do or I've ever done. Is like no. Where my my pants hanging low. But the guy had he in Houston. He felt like he needed to tell me that my pants needed to be pulled up. And it was actually kind of shocking. It was very early in the morning, so I was also like out of it. But he definitely didn't do it for anything that had to do with TSA purposes. He just told me to pull my pants up. So. I was just him, human saying, <laughs> "Hey man, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you know the secret. You should pull your pants up." <laughs> anyway. That's what I got. I mean, there's a few other things in there I'll get to later when we talk about what we're watching. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, new homeowners. Um, luckily, we're not going through the wallpaper fiasco, although we're in a similar situation. Because um, I know the, 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 the woman who owned the house before you is like an elderly woman, right? Yes. And the, the couple that owned the house that Holly and I just bought it was an elderly couple. So wallpaper just must be a thing, and like, it's it's not it's funny because when we were doing the final walkthrough, uh, we were talking and Holly had said like, oh, like the painters were having a couple painters come, you know, in in a couple days. We want to get a quote and they're gonna take it, you know, see what the quote is and they're gonna paint all inside of the house. And the wife was like, what do you mean? Like, what are you changing? It's like, do you not think we're gonna like change things? You know, I mean, they're just I and I know it's because they, I think they've lived there for so long. They're just they're used to how things are. But like in 2018 to have wallpaper in your house, it, it's just kind of mind boggling. It's just weird. Yeah. I, I don't even know where I would go to buy wallpaper. I don't remember ever being in a store and seeing wallpaper. No. Yeah, it's like it's just not a thing. And I was talking to my dad tonight. My dad was helping me take off some of my wallpaper. And I asked him, I was like, well, what's the deal with wallpaper? Because apparently at, at some time, this was a huge thing. It was a phenomenon. Oh. Wallpaper was a fucking phenomenon. Um, let's, glue, let's glue this fucking construction paper to our wall with patterns on it. Great. Uh, it, it no, never it, t- Yeah, it ne- and, and we'll never take it off, and we're going to make sure the glue is the hardest to take off. We're going to have to basically burn this place to the ground if we want to ever take it off. No, I asked him, and he's like, well, back in the day, like, and people didn't like paint their room colors like different color walls. Like they either put wood paneling up or they painted all the walls one color. So when wallpaper started getting popular with all the colors and patterns, like people were like jumped all over it. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, people never thought to just paint their walls different colors. Like they were just like, oh, we're only buying one bucket of paint. It's the same color. Everything's going to be the same everywhere in the house. Can't possibly do different colors. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's I don't know. just odd looking at it because. Or even talking about like, even if we wanted to do wallpaper some like anywhere like i couldn't imagine keeping the same wallpaper for more than like a year i'd be like this is like it's weird like i don't yeah. like it as much anymore because it's such a weird specific design yeah where like colors are are i don't know yeah it is odd but um we kind of had that factored in with the painter so we're doing the same thing painting and, and getting the floors done and then we'll be moving in uh starting the end of next week Nice, nice. Very exciting. It's and very then exciting. Uh, getting some wedding stuff done. You know, we're now T minus, uh, it'll actually be three months to the day tomorrow. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I gotta go, I gotta go get your, uh, I gotta get the tuxedo. I gotta get, I gotta get fitted. I'm planning on going, uh, I'm assuming they're open on the weekends, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, they're open Saturday. I don't know about Sunday. They're open like 10 to 4 on Saturday. So, yeah. I love a good tuxedo fitting. There's something about going into a place and feeling like a fancy boy for a little while, like having them like measure you and like, you know what I mean? Try things on. I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. And it's, uh, we're going the classic look. We got the suspenders and the bow tie. Ooh. So, uh, love it. Love it. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to be looking fancy. Oh, I can't uh, wait. And then, yeah, work, just working, got promoted at work. Whoa, which, this guy. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, awesome. Couldn't have worked out better with owning a new home. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Didn't really plan it that way, but uh, <laughs> now I just now I get to kind of hear all the bird stories from my new hire. And, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty magical. Hey, so how's that? So how's that going? How's the new hire going? Is there any updates? She's been sick <laughs> almost as much as she's been in the office. So it's I wouldn't like, expect anything less. Right when she gets some momentum, boom, she's sick. She has laryngitis. She has bronchitis. Oh my god. 
So it's like you and like, you know, when you're starting a new job, like you really just need to be there and immerse yourself in it because you're getting used to the culture there. You're getting used to systems you need to learn. And she's just not there consistently enough yet. I think she'll be okay, Um, but she's still she's really nice, but she's still just like as odd as ever. Uh, (laughs) it's, It's just so funny. We were talking about something the other day. Uh, oh, it was she was in the end of last week and for St. Patrick's Day, she wore like this whole green <laughs> outfit. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I was like, I actually don't own anything green, which I don't. I have one green sweatshirt, but I like wasn't going to wear it to work. And um, I was like, but, you know, my last name's Fogarty. My dad's Irish. And she's like, oh, that's a funny story. My mother is adopted. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just went into this story and I'm like, what? what? Like why is it, why is the story starting like that? And her mother was adopted and never knew her heritage and all this. And I'm like, my version of the story is my last name's Fogarty, my dad's Irish. Her version is her mother's adopted. She never met her parents. Like oh, oh my god. So it's like with that, it anytime you bring up some type of topic, she has a story to go with it. Yeah. So which is tough because I obviously want like I want to like help her along and kind of start conversation and be personable but i also don't because i don't i, I hate that like I, I don't want to talk about like my personal life yeah oh. but with her it's just it's always just a huge story also with people talking about their personal life and you don't really know them that well you don't know how far to like joke and make fun with it you know what i mean like like for all you know like her mother being adopted could be like this you know like she doesn't care like it's just like fun like whatever light thing she uses like anecdotal you know piece of information or she could be fucking devastated by her you know finding out that she was adopted and you could like make an off-color joke and like it could work or it could not so it's like you you're putting the other person you're telling that in conversation with in a bad position always absolutely so i like and i didn't know how to take it like i didn't know what that meant so i was just like oh oh okay yeah yeah you should never do that people out there in the world like when you're talking with someone you don't really know that well try and keep it like surface level or at least if you're going deep, like have it make sense. Like you're talking about adoption, and then you say it. You don't just you know just come out of the blue with it. Yeah, lead with my mother was adopted. I mean, I, I, I you know then now I don't know where the conversation is going. Right, it's, exactly. It's, it's me. I don't know. It just makes me nervous. But um, so that works going well. And then so I didn't do a bracket this year for the college basketball. Yeah. And I have a notorious. I'm just I I just jinx everything. Yeah. So instead of doing a bracket, Holly was doing one for Morgan Stanley. So I did one for her. And guess who I picked to win it all? I, I'm going to say Virginia. Yes. The only <laughs> team in college basketball history to lose to a 16 seed in the first round. It, oh, and I, I picked them to win the whole thing. If that isn't the Ryan Stink, then I don't know what is. History. In the history of in a the sport. History, it's like what? It's 135 games, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's incredible. It's been they've been playing this tournament forever, and no one seed has lost to a 16 seed until Ryan no. decides to not do one himself. It upset you know the what fantasy I, gods, and now. And I was thinking of it. You know what I should have did? I should have bet on the 16 seed. You as soon as I should've. picked Virginia to win, I should have known. Yeah. That that was going to happen, I, but honestly, that you dropped the ball there because you probably should have told us that you did that because then I we know. because we would have immediately known to go ahead and, and, and bet on the 16. <laughs> Next time. See, I got to start taking advantage of this thing, using it to my advantage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, and then, yeah. And then Holly and I were, were testing out this new thing, which we at restaurants where we'll argue like with each other a little bit. <laughs> and like, I stepped it up a little bit tonight. We went to Giuseppe's near, um, near our house. Yeah. So I just like would like, I'll, I gently slap her in the face. Just oh, like, you're, I, oh, you're going like into like physical arguing too. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. And I, I want. Like I want to see. <laughs> we kind of want to see how the people around us and the staff react. Because naturally, I think people shy away. Like they're not, they're not going to approach me. Yeah. But you, you know, be, the problem is you might get that one person I'm who's on. who's going to tackle you off the bar stool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll be worth it. You know. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little boring, so yeah. I'm just trying to spice it up a little bit. So I'll, I'll keep everyone updated how that goes. It, you know, if you don't hear from me for a while, you know when it went south. <laughs> okay, <All right. laughs> that's funny. That's good stuff. I like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it. I mean, I there's like I said, there's a few other things. I working for a two weeks in Dallas. It was. I met a lot of interesting people, so I, I feel like I could go for days. As, as I think of them in future podcasts, I'll try and bring them back up. But. Perfect. Yeah. 
So uh, moving on to some news. Obviously, a lot of things have happened in the last month. Um, but two of our favorite things are kind of seems like they're starting to merge together. Yeah. Uh, Barstool Sports and WWE. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania is officially less than three weeks away. It is April 8th from New Orleans. Yeah. And as is customary every year for WrestleMania, the Saturday night before is NXT TakeOver, which is kind of their biggest um, live special of the year. And former Indianapolis Colts punter and current Barstool personality Pat McAfee will actually be on the TakeOver pre-show panel uh, talking wrestling. Yeah. That's awesome. It, it is absolutely awesome. And he's the perfect person to dive into WWE, not only because he's a massive fan of WWE, and like, but he's the perfect person at Barstool, too. Like, he, I think that he's just, like, the way his content works, he gets, like, when he can be, like, totally himself and when he's going to need to, like, you know, like, he's going to, he's going to, what I'm trying to say is he's going to fit perfectly in with, with WWE. And, like, he's going to go with whatever storyline ends up coming from this. Because I, I got to imagine there's going to be something that comes from this. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is th- this is kind of just like a foot in the door. I don't think this is a one-off thing. No, I me neither. Re- no. Um, and I think from a personality standpoint, you have a guy with a, a big but a – I'm trying to think of the right word. A big, contagious personality. So, like, I like listening to Pat McAfee. I think his energy and his enthusiasm is contagious. Yes. And he obviously loves – He, I think he really loves wrestling. He, he likes WWE. So you're going to have someone like that. On the pre-show panel, that's going to be great for WWE, and it's going to be great for Barstool to get more exposure. But WWE, I have to imagine, if they're paying close enough attention, should covet the type of fans that Barstool has. Oh, my These God. Absolutely. will consume as much content as possible. WWE is consistently ahead of the ahead of the groove. I don't know, that's probably the wrong saying, but ahead of itself. <laughs> I, I like in- that saying way better than what the whatever the real one is. So keep going with that. Ahead of the group. But, you know, I'm like, they were the first ones to do tout. And now they're doing, like, uh, Facebook Live. They do the Mix Max Challenge. Yep, so yep. they are trying to just give their viewers content, 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 especially with the WWE Network. So if they can kind of study how Barstool is doing and the not only the Barstool, like, how the audience consumes content for Barstool, but the age range. Yep. Like, when WWE was its hottest in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was that 18 to 35 demographic, and that is Barstool's sweet spot. Yep. So if you can get even a little bit of crossover from getting Pat McAfee on there, getting some wrestlers on his podcast and on his serious show, I it, it's a no-brainer. It's such a smart move. And NXT is more more than the main roster is more of that 1835 demographic more of that rabid fan and nxt their live event their live specials cater to that yeah so i i'm so happy i'm so excited i think it's going to be a win-win and i mean wwe's a you know publicly traded billion dollar company that's really not bad for barcelona to be associated with <laughs> yeah not bad at all not not bad at all that's it's awesome and i'm so i'm so happy it's pat mac i love him uh, his yep. da- his daily tweets are like amazing. Like the motivation, the motivational tweets he does, and he yeah. always does a Kenny Powers gif <laughs> attached to it. Like it, it, they're amazing, and he's just and he's just such a like a nice, genuine guy. He's like yep. super, like genuine is exactly the word for him. Like he's just like that's just the person he is. So, um, I and I'm I'm so happy that he's going to be that teaming up with WWE. It's awesome. I agree. And I don't want to get too much into it, but did want to mention it because it's such awesome news. Daniel Bryan is officially cleared to be a WWE wrestler again. That's I I kind of when when he first was put on the shelf because of his his health, oh. I was always concerned with that the the day would come that he would be able to get back in the ring because I would think that like maybe he would be rushing it or the doctors like just barely are clearing him, you know what I mean? But after a while of him sitting out, I feel like, the, you know, I have to imagine that this is like a legitimate, like he's cleared to wrestle. Like, you know what I mean? Like without the, you know, you know, besides the normal risks that, that you would associate with wrestling, he's going to be all right in the ring. You know, that that's what I'm most concerned for. I mean, I was too, but I just know WWE wouldn't clear him just right. to clear him. Like they don't need to. They have too, too deep of a roster, too many guys. And I think it's done because 
he is physically able to go. I know they do have a clause. Um, basically, before they cleared him, they said, look, after every match or after every time you're physical in the ring, you have to do like an impact test. Like you have yeah. to come back. The doctors have to examine you. And they're like, if you're not matching up, you're done. Well, like, that makes sense. You know, yeah. It's not a permanent thing. You're not going to be permanently done. But it's like, we're, you know, the, and I, I like that. I like that they keep them safe. It's the same thing like I watch old wrestling shows on the network and they're smashing each other in the head with chairs. <laughs> and back in the day, it's like, oh, that's awesome. And now I'm like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, yeah. What? That's just, you can't do that. Like, have, yeah. you ever, have you ever picked up a folding chair? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not light. No. no. And when a 300 pound man is hitting you as hard as he can, like, yeah. I'm glad they're evolving as they are. And Daniel Bryan is just like the perfect guy who crowds love. So, like, you know, fans like us will, will love him just because of how great he is in the ring. But the corporate side of WWE, because it is a business, love him too. Yeah. He sells t shirts. People pay to live events to watch him. People will watch him on a network and on pay-per-views. So he, believe me, WWE wants him in there. Yeah. The, them keeping the, him out of the ring for two years from a business perspective was terrible because those yes shirts were selling like hotcakes. I mean, he was their most popular guy and he was a popular guy that the crowd could get behind. It wasn't like a Roman Reigns or John Cena, Yeah. but they really did it out of his, you know, for the benefit of his health. So I really believe that he's back because he is okay and i'm freaking pumped yeah. uh, i'm so happy absolutely me too i and it was it was awful like he was in the prime of his career when he got you know yeah you know, got you know got injured and had to sit, sit out so it really sucks i hope he can you know i hope he can like I, it's gonna be great to see him back in the ring so whatever he does it's just it's just awesome to see him back in the ring for sure i agree yep uh speaking of uh back in the ring <laughs> three Coming at your uh, your eyeballs very soon it was April thirteenth, I yes. believe. Yep. yep. Uh, April thirteenth, and honestly, Rough and Rowdy two from a production value side was miles leap years ahead of Rough and Rowdy one. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just as entertaining, um, but now Rough and Rowdy three, they're adding Bill Burr to the to the commentary desk with El Prez and Big Cat. I know. That's that's a game changer. It, it, it absolutely is. And like for you heard the clip, right, from Bill Burr, like how he was talking on his I don't know if he was on his podcast or another podcast, but he yeah. was talking about Rough and Rowdy, and this is how Barstool kind of got um, you know, they kind of picked up that Bill Burr wanted to go on Rough and Rowdy. Bill Burr was saying what a genius idea it was. And he basically and Bill Burr is a big boxing guy. Like he's a big fan of the sport. And he was saying that he'd rather watch these backcountry hicks fight each other than watch professionals. He said, "This is be- this is better entertainment. Watching boxing, watching this, and, and honestly, I I can't disagree with him. And so he was like super excited. And he wanted to go. I think he I, don't, I think he said he would definitely buy the next one. And El Prez immediately put out the invite and was like, come and you know commentate with us. It's gonna be electric. Them three in in the booth. Yeah, because he. I mean, he's really one of my favorite like comedians, especially for like social analysis. Yeah." You know, like him analyzing the boxes coming in the ring. I can, yeah. I, I can just build it up in my mind. <laughs> yeah. He's so funny. It's it's a perfect mix. And I agree. I mean, you're getting what? I, I mean, I can't even count how many fights you get to watch. 50, 60 it's maybe? It's unbelievable. And it's the, perf- the, the perfect length. Length. Three yeah. rounds, in and out. In and out. In and out. Because even if there's not a knockout, the, re- the match is over at a good amount of time. You're ready for the next one. It's perfect. Yep. It's perfect. It's, it's a ton. Um, so. It's you're right. It's close to it's probably close to 45 50 matches. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it is it is a lot. And now I don't know if they have a main event yet, but I through that throw ride guy that lunatic. <laughs> he's a lunatic. He's a part of it, right? Yeah, so he's he's like the they they're calling it the main event, but it's I don't know if it's the you know the actual main event, but it's like the big it's the marquee, it's the top of the card, right? It's the it's the one that like it's like the first one was Smitty and uh, no, sorry, Hank and Tex, right? Yep. And then it was Smitty and Twenty Dollar Chef, and now it's Thrill Ride. I don't know who his opponent is though, because I think they really were were banking on El Prez and Michael Rappaport. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I would want to see that though, because I I, uh, was, I I don't know if I want to see that. Like El Prez is forty one. I mean Rappaport yeah. is, doesn't look great. No. You know? No, I mean you got to young the young dummies in there like right. Smitty. And- 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that would just be an ugly match to watch. So yeah, getting like Smitty and Twenty Dollar Chef was really great, and Hank and Tex was awesome. Was and awesome. Who, and so I hope they get. Some, I don't know who throw. Like I don't think they've announced it yet, but I don't know who he's you know fighting. But well, well hopefully he's, it's, a, he's a nutcase. Yeah, I mean they need to get somebody like with decent size or experience because he's a he's a maniac. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. throw him in there against some skinny guy. He's gonna knock his head off. Yeah, no, no, not like that. Remember the first one we were watching, and there was like that huge guy versus the little guy, <laughs> yeah. and he just kept putting his head down like a battering ram. <laughs> yeah, like a battering ram. Oh man, it's it's uh, gonna be great. April thirteenth, rough and rowdy. It's it's if you order it ahead of time, it's ten bucks. If you order it the day of, it's fifteen. It's like it's the best fifteen dollars you'll ever spend. Best ten or fifteen dollars. I watched it with Mike D and Ray last time, and it was their first time. Yeah, and they were they were like cooting and hollering, like <laughs> like we were watching like a Mayweather, uh, McGregor. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was so good. It's crazy. Um, so Rough and Rowdy three, April thirteenth. I'm sure we'll talk more about it as the event gets closer. Um, I think what would be maybe the most watched Rough and Rowdy ever is if we had President Trump versus Joe Biden. Oh man, I would pay for that. I would definitely. I would pay thirty dollars for that. <laughs> yeah, easy. Maybe, maybe, maybe thirty-five. I don't know. Thirty, I think, would be good. But um, as always, I mean, Donald Trump's always in the news. But uh, Joe Biden made some comments. He, he had a speech in Florida on Tuesday, and um, someone had asked Joe Biden if he would debate Donald Trump. You know, if he's going to run for president, and Joe Biden responded, "No." And also said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. Good. I mean, see, that's the thing with Donald, Donald Trump brings the crazy, I think, out of literally everybody. Yeah. Like, when's the last time you heard Joe Biden? <laughs> hey, right. Joe, would you yeah. debate the president? No, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> you is, can't say that. Uh, uh, is, so, is Joe Biden actually um, thinking of running for president? I think so. Really? Which is just, yeah. I mean, I, on one hand, yeah, yeah, I guess, okay. But on the other hand, it's like you're 80. Like, uh, can we get somebody a little younger in there with a little more energy? Like, yeah, I don't know. But I think he might be. It's still a little early, but you kind of got to get the, the motor running now if you are going to be running. Um, but in response, who usually take the higher road, um, decided not to. And he tweeted, crazy Joe Biden is trying to act like a tough guy. Actually, he is weak, both mentally and physically, and yet he threatens me for the second time with physical assault. He doesn't know me, but he would go down fast and hard, crying all the way. Don't <laughs> threaten people, Joe. <laughs> oh, President my God. Everybody. But, he, uh, he doesn't – his he, oh, it, it, it blows my mind. I mean, say all these, like, all these things. It's just like – at this point, it's like a – this is a fake thing. Like this can't be yeah. real because I'm living all, all, in a fake world. It's just like, it's crazy. And like, I feel like I think literally SNL every week, like they sit down in their writer's room. Cause I think every week they, since Trump's been president, they've done something, right? Some joke or some skit about Trump. I think they have to literally sit down and be like, did we already do something like this? Like, did this already happen? Like, did he already threaten someone with physical violence? Like, is this just like, is this the thing the president does now? Or, you know what I mean? Or do we have to spin this? Like, is this going to be enough shock value? Because the people are already desensitized to this bullshit, which sucks, right. which really it fucking does. sucks. And his, his tweets kill me the most because they're so fucking dumb. And they sound so dumb. They sound like either a five, like it's either a five year old or a senile old man, and like it's like a combination of the two. It's yeah, which fucking, is a terrible combination. Oh, uh, for the president, for the fucking president, yeah. the leader of the free world, it sounds like a fucking idiot. Oh my god, it's crazy. It's fucking what a world, man. What a fucking world. So now, say this fight happens, right? <laughs> say they actually were gonna fight each other behind the gym, some gym somewhere. Yeah. Who, who you got? Um. I got. I this is this pains me to say it. I got. I got Trump. Yeah, he's a big guy. He is a big guy. He's a big guy, and I think he would just throw his weight around. That's the only real reason. Just like if you said if Rapport and Prez fought, I'd have to give it to Rapport because he's just like right. a bigger human, and he would just like. I think he would just. I don't know. Trump, Trump might. Think... Trump might actually die mid fight and fall on top of Joe Biden, and that would be it. Yeah, because there's no skill there, so it's just no. from either side. So I think it's just like. Yeah, the bigger man, I guess, by process of elimination wins. Yeah, it would be hilarious, though. I'd tell you what, it would be a 
I would just I would have eyes 100 percent on Trump the entire time just because I oh, want to see I want to see what he looks like when he moves like being every athletic. Movement. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every yeah. movement. How his eyes move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh another, man. That'd be something. Another thing I was thinking. So dead or alive, your your dream political fight. If you could have two people, oh. they can both be dead, they can both be alive, or one and one. Who would you have? And now I'm saying the dead or alive thing for a specific reason because. And I'm hoping you know where I'm going with this. Because we had a, a man when we first started the blog who has since passed. Oh, my he was a, a, a political figure oh, from up north. Yep. Who I, who I would who I think Rough and Rowdy was made for. Like, don't yep. you agree? Rob Ford, my sweet Rob yeah. Ford. Ah, oh, man. Poor guy. Gone too soon. I, gone too soon. Well, he, I mean, that's what happens when you smoke crack. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you smoke crack. And I was also very obese. But the... Uh, the thing about Rob Ford was he was he around when Trump was named president was crowned president yeah. crowned president whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> inaugurated crown crowned oh president <laughs> was he, was he alive or was he dead I think he died before that okay so I would really like to see a post Trump presidency with Rob Ford in it like I yeah. like that would be something like that would really be something because I feel like he would have pulled no punches literally and figuratively um, against his friend to the south. I I I know exactly where you're going with that. As soon as you said deceased, I Rob Ford popped right into my head. I I I don't know if I'd pick him for a fight because it would just you, you saw all the videos of him trying to hike the football and shit, right? Like him just falling <laughs> over. It would be a bad look for Rob Ford. Be, like break his ankle, step <laughs> off a podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just is not a coordinated human being, so I'd feel bad uh, putting him in the ring. So maybe he's like the guest ref. Um, uh, but I would definitely put like. I don't know. That's a tough one. I would probably go like George Washington versus Donald Trump, like the first president, the most noble of them all, versus yeah. versus Donald Trump. I would say Abraham Lincoln because he's also a very noble human being, but I don't think Abraham Lincoln has like a – from what I've heard and what I've seen in the movie Lincoln, I don't think he really has an aggressive like fighting bone in his body. No, he seems very depressed. Yeah, very, seems very <laughs> depressed. Or maybe that's just Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, maybe. it's like Daniel. He's actually this this really happy guy. He's like, I am in character. I can't. I can't touch yeah. now. So I would probably. I would honestly. I would want to see Teddy Roosevelt fight somebody. Oh. I feel like he would come armed with yeah. a um, what is that thing with a gun? Also has the spear on the oh, end of it. Bayonet. Yes. <laughs> like he like doesn't care that what the other person has. Like I have my bayonet. I will win the fight. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And I think he'd do it. He just strikes me as someone who. Would win in any fight. Yeah. So maybe Teddy Roosevelt versus Trump. Or, you know. Or, yeah. Or maybe Taft versus Trump. Whoa. The real, <laughs> the real heavyweights. <laughs> Taft, Mustache Mountain, right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh um, uh, man. So um, moving on from fighting and politics, a new thing uh, we're thinking of implementing. Maybe every week. Maybe once in a while. But. We've seen that there are certain questions on Twitter that get a lot of hype, go viral, and some of them have to do with things that we're interested in. So this week, uh, we found a tweet where someone had said to the to the Twitterverse, who is your least favorite character from one of or your favorite TV show? So it doesn't, you know, you might, you don't have to pick your favorite TV show ever, because that's a hard question in itself. Yeah. Like, what's your favorite TV show? But... A TV show that maybe is in your top five or three, and then a least favorite character from it. Do you have do you have anyone or any show in mind? Yeah, I have one. This is definitely my top one. I also have runner up, but I also want to just say this ahead of time. When I was thinking of this, and I had when when I first saw this question floating around Twitter, the the first thing I tried to like differentiate about it is I didn't want to pick somebody that I disliked on the show, like like someone that you like like in later seasons of Breaking Bad, you really hate Walter White. But it's not because right. he's a fucking shithead. It's be it's well, it is because he's a shithead. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like it's not because he's like a shitty character. You're supposed to, yeah. It's a great character, and like you really start to hate Walter White. So right. So no. So not that. This is just someone that I really truly hate, and I'm gonna stick with Breaking Bad. I'm gonna go with Skyler because Skyler mm -hmm. is a bitch and a hater. Good pick. <laughs> it's a bit. And I'll give my runner up after you do yours, just in case. I don't. I don't want to have to. Pick, I don't want to pick yours. But uh, what what was your pick? So I went, I went the comedy route. Okay. And I went with Parks and Rec. 
And it's only in the early seasons, but I hated Mark. Mark Brandanowitz. I Mark Brandanowitz. totally agree with you. I mean, the, the show somehow was was still really good with him, but I, I thought he was just like a terrible, awful character. Like he had no emotion. Like he yeah. just, I don't know. Like he didn't bring anything to the table. He was one dimensional. Yeah. I just hated him. I, I honestly, if I went with a drama, I probably would have picked Skylar too from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, so maybe when you're saying you're runner up, I'll try to think of a good drama one. Yeah, that that is a Mark Brandano which from Parks and Rec is a really good one because I felt I always felt that his character was like we already had Ron Swanson, so why did we need this like middle of the road character? It's like you have the zany, you have Amy Poehler, um, you know, as Leslie Nope, and then you have Ron Swanson, right? Why do you need this like literally middle of the road character where he's like grumpy, but he's also like personable, and he just never really like did anything for me, so. That's a good pick. My runner-up was AJ from The Sopranos. Yeah, he Fuck, sucked. Fucking hate AJ. I know these are those are two very popular ones floating around Twitter, but when I first saw this, immediately Skylar popped into my head. So that was my number one. And then I also hate AJ from he he has like very little redeeming like scenes too. Like there's there's really nothing the entire show for a show that I love. He just is like a wet blanket. Yeah, he, he kind of stunk. And I'll tell you what, it's on the same playing field as that, Carl from Walking Dead. Yeah. You know, for a long time, I mean, even, even you know, well, we haven't, we'll get to that with the TV club, but, right. you know, I don't know. I mean, he he, he kind of stunk, and Lori stunk, too. Yeah, Lori did stink. That's a good Lori one, too. Stunk. Lori did stink. Oh, God, I'm glad she died. It, it she, <laughs> she, she really did stink. I'm glad you said that. She's overlooked yeah. as a bad character because she kind of, like, was gone, you know, like, pretty early on. Um, but, like, yeah, especially, but, and, especially now, but, uh, yeah. And there's a show on the USA Network. Freak, I forgot. And she's in it with uh, Sawyer from Lost. Yeah. And she stinks in that, too. I don't so I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's the... I haven't watched it, but Holly told me she stinks. So maybe Holly just has a bias against her. <laughs> and you know what's weird? So what is that actress's name? What's Lori's like real name? Do you know her name? It's like uh, something with two first names as a last name. It's like Bobby Joe or something. It is uh, oh, Sarah. Sorry, sorry, say that again. You broke up. Oh, Sarah. Callis, C A L L I E S. Oh, so not at all what I was thinking. <laughs> but uh, not but, Bobby Joe. <laughs> but anyway, she. I remember a while ago when we were still doing Twitter News Weekly, um, we had talked about Lori from The Walking Dead, and we tweeted somebody about it. Like, remember we put out that we would put out those tweets after we use someone's tweet, and yeah. a fan account of hers followed us. So we better be careful what we say. Oh boy, they're just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, I mean, we we've we've dealt with some pretty uh, formidable people on on Twitter, yeah. some fan bases. So we don't want to tangle with with the crazies. But yeah, they did the they did follow us. Where that the wildest? What? It's usually the fan accounts that are. <laughs> yeah, and what an odd fan account too. What else has she been in other than The Walking Dead and this other show she's in? Nothing. I'm actually I'm on her Wikipedia right now. All the movies she's been in are it, it's nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing. Um. And then that show, uh, it's called Colony. On oh, US. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, she was in one episode of House. Um, she was in, oh, she was in Prison Break, 74 episodes. Uh, so right. she's just a TV actress, I guess. So. Yeah, I don't know. And she has, a, maybe she runs her own fan account. Maybe that's just her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's the best. All right. <laughs> like, no, we know it's you, Sarah. <laughs> Nobody likes Laurie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that Twitter question of the week, especially if it can, you know, if it centers around TV or film, uh, to me, a nice addition. I agree. Nice addition to the lineup. So we've been we've been off for about a month, which means we've been watching a lot of a lot of TV and movies. That's just what we do. Yeah. So Matt, what have you been watching? So I I've been going to the movies a lot because of my movie pass. I, I think I filled everybody in and you in like all the movies I went to go see while I was in Orlando, right? Yes. Okay. So I went to go see like, basically I, f I, s I saw all the Oscar nominated movies. I finished all those off while I was there. Um, then I, when I was in Dallas, I saw three more movies. I saw black Panther, um, which was so good. 
It was just awesome. Marvel just can't make a bad Marvel movie now. And I really like ever since like Civil War or even like Winter Soldier, go back a few years. They've just like made like mo- like great movie after great movie after great movie. It's just like across the board. They find the exact right directors, the perfect writers, and it's just been working out perfectly. And this one just happens to like fit that bill uh, perfectly as well too. Like Ryan Coogler wrote and directed it, and it's amazing. Soundtrack was done by Kendrick Lamar. It's fire. I downloaded it. It's absolute fire. Um, and. Michael B. Jordan might be in the best shape that I've ever seen any human ever in the history of the world in that movie. <laughs> um, it really is shocking how how good in shape he is. Uh, then I saw this movie called A Fantastic Woman, which ended up winning Best Foreign Film at the Oscars. Had no idea. Huh. Uh, I actually did not know it was a foreign film until I sat down in the theater and the, the subtitles started rolling. And I was like, oh, okay. That's what that's what's happening tonight. I'm I'm reading my movie tonight. I had no idea until I sat down. Uh, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then what else did I see? With oh, I saw Annihilation with Natalie Portman. How was that? Uh, it was a wild movie. It was absolutely wild. I I left the movie like not knowing what to think. It was a, it was like one of those like speechless movies. Adam, te- I told Adam I was going to see it because he had just seen it too. And he's like, let me know what you think right after. And I texted him. I'm like, I literally can't give you an answer of what I think. It was, it like, you really process it after, like way after too. I want to see it again. Um, Did you ever see Ex Machina? No. So it's the same writer, director, Alex Garland. Um, He really takes you like, he takes you way into the deep end of the pool on this one. And like builds this world that, it's the way you see the movie, you're kind of just like you're looking around and discovering things for yourself. And the movie plays out in front of you and he doesn't really like hold your hand at all. He like kind of like lets you discover it. And the way you interpret it could be one way. The way another person interpret it could be another way. You can you could probably watch this movie a hundred times and pick out new things every time you see it. It's it was really, really well done. I thought Natalie Portman was awesome in it. Uh Jennifer Jennifer Jason Lee was also in it and she was really good. She was really, really good. Um, so, yeah, saw that. Um, I watched the Spielberg documentary finally. What would you think? Oh, it was awesome. It was the yeah. best. It was one of the best. It, it's a great way to spend two hours and 40 minutes. I'll, I'll put it that way. It's uh, it, You don't realize what a prolific director uh, Steven Spielberg is until you watch this. You're like, it's unreal. It's crazy. I like how they didn't really necessarily do it chronologically. They just kind of did it like how he – like how he how he picked his movies like they they obviously they started off with his early career but then they yeah. jumped way forward and then went back to the middle and then but yeah i mean he's just done so many he's done so many amazing things it's it's crazy but i obviously hbo did a great job with yeah, that yeah because they, they actually kill documentaries they're doing a uh i, I want to just for a second uh, uh they're doing a fred rogers documentary it's coming out soon I saw that and an Andre the Giant one. Yeah, they 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 are they do they do great movies they and TV shows now they do remarkable documentaries. So yeah. they, that I'm definitely looking forward to those. Um, one of the cool things I picked out of the Steven Spielberg documentary was when they were talking about they did a big section on Schindler's List and talked about um, mm-hmm. you know the, his process for like doing that movie. Um, he started this foundation and now I hate myself because the the name escapes me. But he, he started this foundation where he interviewed Holocaust survivors. And Lindy's grandfather was actually one of the people he interviewed for Schindler's List. Like, he, he interviewed him as, like, part of the foundation, but also part of, like, you know, helping to get information for the movie. Um, and, like, Lindy's grandfather was married when he went into the concentration camps. Like, his wife was killed. And he remarried somebody else afterwards that was from that he met, or not maybe not met, but met afterwards that was also in another concentration camp. It's like this crazy, like, emotional story. And like, if you go on the website of the foundation, like, there's pictures of Lindy and her whole family with her grandfather. And oh, wow. yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And so he had met and interviewed with Steven Spielberg for 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 that movie and for the foundation. Um, which that's, is pretty cool, and they and they did yeah, a big, awesome. they did a, they did a big section on it, and they, he, I think they touched briefly on the actual foundation that 
he was interviewed for. But it was it was really a good documentary, and it was like one of those ones. It's like you really like you watch it, and you're like, this is why I love movies. It's because of people mm. like this, because of people like Steven Spielberg. So it's cool. I liked it. Nice, so, excellent. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you watched. That. I really, I really loved that one. It was yeah. really good. Yeah, and then the last thing, uh, I mean, I've watched. The, I'm, they're all escaping me now, but um, I started watching Glow, uh, and I'm almost done with it. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I really like it. I really, is it how great is Mark Maron? Yeah, uh, Mark Maron is fantastic. Allison Brie is awesome. Yeah, she's so funny. And also, like, um, uh, what is her name? She's the other lead, the one that's her friend, like the soap opera actress who yeah. turns into. Is her, her name Betty Betty Gilpin, I think. Betty Gilpin. Yes, Betty, yeah, Betty, yeah. Betty Gilpin. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know what she, else she's been in, but she's really good too. She and I think she's, she's really funny. Yeah. The, and the whole cast, really, the ensemble is 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 really good too. Um, but Mark Maron is hilarious, and also the producer, the hell's his name, um, the guy who like has all the money for the show. Damn it! The hell is his name? Anyway, he's hilarious too. He's really funny. Oh, like the younger guy? Yeah, the younger guy. What the hell is his name? Shit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, he's he's really funny. Uh, the show overall is is like really really good. I'm. I knew I was gonna Bash. like it. Is that his name? Bash. Yeah, Bash. 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 Yeah, Bash. Um, yeah, yeah, it's very good. Very very good. good show. I'm glad you're watching that. That's uh, yeah. Guy, and I and I'm I'm a little behind. I still need to watch Altered Carbon. I need to catch up with Walking Dead. Obviously, I still need to watch Mr. Robot. Um, I want to watch. I I still haven't seen The Punisher and Jessica Jones season two is out now. So there's like a ton of TV that I need to watch. So I need to stop watching The Office and start watching new stuff because I started watching The, the Office again now. Yeah, well, as they say in the biz, sheesh, <laughs> sheesh. I don't, honestly, though, you get. I I get caught in the rabbit hole because right now I'm rewatching Silicon Valley. I uh, oh. Holly and I watched the entire first season yet yeah, just last night. Oh, it's amazing. Which is one of the uh, the the season one finale of Silicon Valley is in my top five TV shows ever. Yeah. The tip the tip optimization. Oh my god! It's it's the is it's the best. Jo- it's one of the best. It's one of the best comedic jokes and gags, and 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 anything that I've seen. Yeah. And to to turn that gag into like the turning point for them to figure out like what they're doing, um, especially with Richard and like even episode seven, the one before that was so good. It's the first couple, and I it's still a great show, but like the, the first couple seasons of Silicon Valley were like top notch comedic television. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do with T.J. Miller. I mean. It's yep. very easy to look at him, and rightfully so, as kind of a dickhead. And the way he exited the show is ridiculous. And he kind of, you know, was his own worst enemy. But man, is he funny in that show? He is, hilarious. and he's such an important character too. Yeah, like rewatching it, you you kind of not forget, but like Richard couldn't give presentations, he couldn't give speeches, he couldn't do anything. So Ehrlich kind of had to step in and, and like be that guy and let Richard come into his own. So. It kind of stinks that he's not going to be on the show this year, but yeah. I understand it. I mean, from a back behind the scenes standpoint, like you just you can't deal with that. Yeah, no, just can't. Um, but yeah, so we've been, I've been rewatching Silicon Valley. Uh, we started watching The Shy on Showtime, which is um, f- uh, Lena Waithe from Master of None. Yes, she created it, so she's the oh. creator. Um, it's kind of it's just like about inner city Chicago and. It's it fo- like part focuses on the kids, part focuses on um, like the drug dealers, part focuses on the cops, part focuses on like the adults, part focuses on like the high school age kid. It's really really good. Everything ties together. It's only been one season, but really really good. It reminds me, it's as close to the wire as a show as I've seen, um, just with like the authenticity to it and how all the storylines tie together. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, I watched Jumanji. Oh, you have you never seen Jumanji? I've never seen Jumanji. The uh, the new one. Oh, Sorry. the new one. Oh, okay. I was I was gonna say the original one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so why you, is, that a, you... is that a new movie? <laughs> uh, it was it was great. It really? was so good. Oh my god! It was so fun. It was perfectly cast. Like I, it was a sequel, but it wasn't a sequel. Like the way they did it was totally different from the original with the video game aspect and yeah. getting sucked in and like the younger kids, like the high school age kids, 
becoming like Kevin Hart, The Rock, Jack Black, and uh, I forgot the the girl, the woman's name. Uh, but Karen, like the way- Karen Gillian, Gillian, Gillian. Yeah, yeah. So like the way they switched it, like with like The Rock was like the nerd in high school, and Kevin Hart was like the big football player. Yeah. And Jack Black was the pretty girl. Yeah. Oh my! It was it was so fun. It was really really good. Barbie Cannavale is the villain. Oh, that's awesome! I didn't even see him in any of the trailers. Yeah, he's he's in the he's the villain. He's really he's really good. It's it's really fun. It I would be shocked if people watch it and didn't enjoy it. That, it's just really it got a, it, first of all it did crazy good at the box office, and number two, it got really good Rotten Tomato scores. Yeah, it was I I, I can see why I really really liked it. What, um, um, I, I, oh, sorry, what were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say I would really recommend it. Huh. What what was like the connection between the old movie and the new movie? Is it like a big spoiler, or is it just kind of like a? Not really. I mean, there's so there's a secondary storyline um, that I won't spoil for you, but it didn't really have anything to do with the original. It honestly was a sequel in name only. Okay. I mean, I might I might have missed some because I haven't seen the original Jumanji in so long, so maybe I missed some Easter eggs. I'm sure there were. Yeah. But as far as the story, like you could not see the original Jumanji, and it made no difference because I don't I don't really remember it. It's so interesting to me that they that they made this a Jumanji sequel. Because, like you said, like it's only a sequel, and in, in, it's in sequel and name only. Like, I feel like that, and, and now I know that it did really well, so I don't think it really mattered at the end of it. But going into this, I was like, this movie's going to shoot itself in the foot because it's calling itself Jum- a Jumanji sequel when it's right. n- absolutely nothing like the original Jumanji, and people are going to hate that. People are not going to. It's going to be like what the ghost what happened to the Ghostbusters. Um, hmm. But I guess that's where, only when you put a full female cast. That's the only time when you can really flop a movie ridiculous yeah. um you know really hurt a movie you put the rock in it doesn't really matter what you call it um no. <laughs> so but that, he, was, he was very good in it too yeah, i mean he's good in everything i mean it's just that's just what the rock does he's just he's good great. at everything he's he's a specimen of a human being he's a great actor he's funny he's charming i don't know yeah, um, well, but yeah it was really good and it actually had some good like i was watching i'm like oh like it was an uplifting movie it had some really good um what, what, I can't remember the word I'm thinking of, but it just had like a lot of uh, kind of like good like values or talking points, like things you can take away from the movie that were positive. Oh, nice. That's uh, good. Especially from like a teenager perspective, like high school perspective of like body image and how you think of yourself and trying to fit in with the crowd, those type of things. Yeah. It was really, really well done. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. So 100% recommend that. Um okay. I am, unlike you, caught up on Walking Dead. I have watched, uh, I have watched all the episodes, um, so I won't say anything more than that because I know we'll get to it eventually in the TV club. Uh, but the most recent thing I've watched, which I really enjoyed, is uh, Bill Hader's SNL. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, it was it was wonderful. Yeah, it really was. And I think, like in a year, they've had so many first time hosts this year, especially starting off in the fall. Like, you can kind of tell, like, when Will Ferrell was doing it a couple weeks ago and Bill Hader was back, like, the the writers and the cast are just like, all right, like, pressure's off. <laughs> like, we know these guys are going to carry us. Yeah. And they, they're they just, they're amazing. He's so good. Bringing Stefan back. Um, I, I just, I loved everything about it. I thought it was really, really funny. It, it was awesome. It was great. I love that they brought the Californians back. Yes. Uh, oh, it was, I, when, I, when I saw that, I lost my mind. They did it really early on. And it was awesome that Pete Davidson came out. I was like, "Where are you guys from?" He's like, "He's like, I grew up in wherever he said he grew up." He's like, "I've never heard any of these accents before." <laughs> I love that Pete yeah. Davidson always comes into the skits and is like the, it's just basically himself, and right. he just like he's, calls he's, out what's weird about the skit, right? Which yeah. kind of it makes the skit like self aware in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, and then he Pete Davidson came on Weekend Update, who's yeah. just. Anytime he comes on it himself and you nailed it on Twitter, it's just, yeah. it's so great to see. He gives such a refreshing take on like mental health. And I mean, someone like him who's gone through so much already in his life and he's only what, 22? Yeah, yeah, yep. He started like, when he was 18. It's insane. It's crazy. Yeah, and SNL. I mean, and I honestly, I look at SNL not from like a critical standpoint. Like it, something either makes me laugh or it doesn't. And yeah. it's a modern miracle if you think about it that it goes off without a hitch every week. Yeah. Like live sketch comedy shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not like a sporting event or you know, so like that they can pull it off and that it is still this funny. 
I don't know. It's just one of my favorite things to watch. So yeah, I uh, excited for Chadwick Boseman. Oh in a yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I think he's gonna do really well. Um, we uh, just I want to add one thing to what I've been watching. I went to go see Mean Girls on Broadway last week. How was that? It was so good. It yeah. was yeah. It was so much fun. Uh, one of our the, one of Lindy's really good friends, who's like David friends since they were kids, and who I'm I'm pretty good friends with now. Her name is Barrett Weed. She played Janice in Mean Girls on Broadway, and she came out and hung out with us after, yeah. and she was like telling us about like how it's you know how it's been going and like how it's like very this very rigorous thing they're in previews right now, so it's only like they're doing like you know limited shows. But it's like this is like to get out the kinks before it like goes act it opens actually live. And so she works with Tina Fey every day. Like Tina Fey's the, the like she wrote it and her husband did the music for it. And Lauren Michaels just hangs out all the time backstage with them. Mm. And so she said that Lauren Michaels is like exactly how you would think he is. Like he's just really? a very nice guy and very quiet. And like, but then sometimes he makes like funny jokes and he like they, like he's like he thinks he's like a comedian. He like he uh, she was telling a story about how like she walked up to I think that it was him and Tina Fey talking to each other and she walked up to like you know say hi and he like turned to her and was like we're having a very private conversation and then she's like oh I'm so sorry he goes oh, I'm just kidding like just like just like a little <laughs> funny thing I think that's hilarious yeah um, like what are you supposed to say to that like, yeah. you're obviously like oh my god I'm so sorry <laughs> yeah yeah and she said he's like a he's like a super super nice guy um, and he just hangs out backstage. And uh, she, her, and uh, the other cast of Mean Girls got invited to go to the SNL that uh, Will Ferrell hosted, and they were watching from Lauren Michaels' office. Oh, so which is like up in the studio and like overlooks the stage, like a bird's nest or something, yeah. right? It like it like it sits there. But she said that Lauren Michaels just constantly, con- and now that we watched the the Hater episode, me, Lindy and I, we noticed it. Lorne Michaels not only just stands like offset all the time, he's like constantly like involved in like talking with the people on stage and like the host and the other like comedians and everything. It's kind of crazy. Like, and now you, if you watch it between commercial breaks, you see him like just kind of like in, in real there. odd places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's he's so cool. hands on. I mean, which, which you kind of love and I don't think he'll ever change. Yeah. No, no, definitely I, not. I watched his uh, comedians in cars getting coffee and you can tell like he's. That that's what he does. Like he's not in it to just like sit back and let other people do it. Like yeah. he he's in everything from like how they set up for the musical guest to the art direction to that's awesome though. That's yeah. so cool that her friend yeah. does it. Oh, yeah. oh goes, that's probably gonna be huge. It's it's I think it's it's really good and the the music is really funny. Um and it's just like well written and the and the people they got to play all the characters are like spot on. It's really, really good. And actually the kid who plays Damien, his name is shit. Gray Hudson, I think his name is, or Hanson, Gray Hanson, Hudson. He uh he was in, I saw him in Providence. He was on the touring group uh for Book of Mormon, and he was Elder McKinley um in that one. And that's like kind of like a it's a pretty big role, but he has this yeah. like fantastic tap number in Book of Mormon and I remember how like good he was and he has actually he has another tap number in this in the Mean Girls one too that they added like just last week or like the week before I went to go see it because they discovered that he was like such a or like they he brought up that he was such a good like tapper I think they added it to it and it's pretty it's pretty cool so hopefully it makes it to the final thing but yeah Mean Girls on Broadway very good when it opens up I suggest everybody go see it Jess Keller saw it as well Ah. Yeah, Jessica oh. saw it with, uh, I think she went with her mom for her birthday or something like that. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I, I hope it, when it opens, I would love to go see it. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I I'm think I think we're planning on going to see it again, so we'll have to do like a trip to New York. Or, or we'll all go see it. That sounds mo- like the best thing in my entire life. Yeah, so we'll do it. We'll do it, except we just won't invite Justine. We won't tell Justine. Right. Or we'll invite her. We'll tell her we're going to uh, Kansas. So we send her on a plane that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very elaborate scheme uh, for just it a is. prank. Yeah. We, we buy the plane tickets for thousand dollars Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, do you have anything else you want to add to what we're watching? I believe that's it. All right. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure like I'm trying to think like I didn't really watch anything new on the planes back and forth, but I'm sure I'm missing a ton of stuff. I try to write it down because I just watch so much so often. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, but you, I'm, and I know I'm missing stuff. I'm promising myself now that if I'm going to watch TV, I have to watch something that I haven't seen. Like I, I made that promise to myself the other day because I'm like way too far. I'm too far behind on everything to just be watching The Office. Yeah, Punisher too. You're gonna once you. The thing with Punisher is make sure you cut, carve some time out because you're not gonna be able to stop watching it. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the way I am with a lot of shows too. So, and I've heard that multiple times about the Punisher. So, I definitely will carve out some time. Well, I think that's gonna do it for the podcast tonight. I feel good. I feel good to be back. We went, we went, we went about the normal length we normally do a podcast, but I feel like we got a lot out. We, we we're all caught up now. We'll be back for Walking Dead next week. We'll we'll catch up with Movie Club and we'll continue this. Hopefully, we'll have another good uh, Twitter question of the week to yeah, uh, to add to the docket. That'll be fun. But uh, until next week, thanks everybody for listening. Yeah, appreciate it. Glad we're back, and I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Good luck with the house, Ryan. I hope uh, the painting goes well. Thanks. I hope the wallpaper doesn't eat you alive. It's gonna. I think I'm just gonna be part of the wall pretty soon. I think I'm just gonna be part of the wallpaper. You're just your wallpaper now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I am. I'm ninety. If you look at me right now, I'm ninety percent wallpaper glue. It's all over me. So I, I believe in you. You can do it. Thank you, Ryan. You're such a good friend. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. See ya.